Okay, uh, question of the day. Um, it's Friday afternoon, it's been a long day, um, but I saw in the comments there was a lot of talk about um, moisture getting uh, in the laminate and then creating voids. Um, that uh, question was by Pete F, um, who he's contacted me before. He's, um, he's in the avi aviation industry um, as, a, as a pilot and he's heard that um, you know by having having moisture in uh, in the laminate it um, when it goes when the plane goes up in the sky and it gets cold um, freezes um, that can create voids so um, now is that a, is that an actual thing and uh, yeah so basically because he was saying oh you know he, he asked about the video I did the other day when I said you can't put voids into a part after it's been cured. Now it's it's a matter of terminology. Um, a void is a void, is an air bubble that's in in the cured laminate. Keep my hands down. I think it might be affecting the autofocus. Um, <laughs> me and my hands. Um, so yeah, it's a terminology thing. So what Pete is describing we call a delamination because the part has been laminated moisture has worked its way in uh, through a path uh, you know with porosity um, a whole bunch of ways that moisture can get into the part when water freezes it expands and then that creates uh, a delamination so it's it's not a void it's a delamination and Yes, that is an absolute real problem with with aircraft, with composite aircraft. So, particularly with honeycomb panels, because there's lots of volume within the honeycomb cells to take on water and for water to build up. And then when that water freezes, it expands. And then in, in a honeycomb panel, it'll um, disbond the uh, carbon composite skin to the honeycomb core, so um, so it's a matter of terminology. It's 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 not a void. It's it's either a delamination or a disbond. Um, so and it's an absolute real thing. Often you'll see it at um, at airports. You'll see um, uh, technicians walking around the plane after it's landed with a thermal thermal imaging camera looking for cold spots on the plane because if there's significant ice build up then um, that'll stay cold while the plane's uh, on the ground so the difference between aircraft and um, and bicycles is that aircraft can operate in a very uh, a very wet humid environment such as in the tropics during the wet season and and then they take off and they go to 10,000 uh, 10, meters above sea level and it's minus 50 degrees and everything freezes. So, um, so it's a real problem with aircraft. It's not so much a problem with bicycles because A, you're not exposed to that, um, that humid environment and then that sudden freezing. Um, it's pretty rare to be in a very humid environment and and then go to minus 50 degrees on a bicycle. So, um, so while it's a significant problem for composite aircraft, it's much less of a problem for a carbon fiber bicycle. So moisture is still a, a, a problem and it can, it can uh, degradate the resin um, over the over long term. Um, so it is recommended to have uh, areas yeah, exposed edges sealed where possible. Um, yeah, and particularly where there's you know um, inserts such as um, water bottle inserts, we see a lot of the corrosion around those inserts because they're typically aluminium, and you get galvanic corrosion, and then that can travel up the laminate um, by capillary action up the fibres. So anyway, I hope that sort of cleared. Um, yeah, sort of clear some of those misunderstandings there. There was, um, yeah, there was quite a lot of comments um, backwards and forth between Pete and uh, and Oscar and uh, Eric. Let me look at who else was there. Yeah, Eric O. Um, running with Shemp also um, made a comment. Um, yeah, talking more about um, 
aerospace uh, standards versus versus bicycles. So that's a whole other topic in itself. So I won't cover that now. I've spoken enough. Um, it's six o'clock in the evening. I'm yeah, about to go home and have some dinner. And uh, yeah, I hope to get out riding on the weekend. Hope you do too. See you next time. Bye.